I was curious to understand what had brought my great-grandparents here from Ireland and what life on the gold fields was like in the 1850s in Wadawurrung country. My working life has been a journey from campfires to concert halls. I fell willingly into a life of song, playing, singing, travelling far and wide, gathering and songwriting, land rights and environmental anthems, and much more. I gathered an encyclopedia of stories in my travels from the multitude of people and experiences met along the way. Music is a gift, they say. I think it's a gift because it's given. And music was a gift from my mother. My father, on the other hand, told me that the attentive ear is the sage's dream. I came to understand the brutal injustice of our treatment of Aboriginal peoples from our earliest colonial history to the more subtle forms of racism of the present day. I also came to understand the brutal colonial history of my Irish ancestors at the hands of the same colonial oppressors that inevitably led many Irish people to these shores. Somewhere in the midst of it all was a hunger for justice. Wikipedia says, Justice is the legal or philosophical theory by which fairness is administered. Anyone who's grown up with siblings knows how hardwired we are for fairness. Try giving only one of your young children an ice cream in front of your other young children. <laughs> we laugh because we know the absurdity of... Uh, well, the arc of history bends towards justice, said Martin Luther King. And I want to believe that's true. I think justice or injustice is at the heart of the incidents that led to the Eureka Stockade. And psychologists say that we are as hardwired for justice as we are for hunger. My dad couldn't stand injustice and his unshakable honesty often put him at odds with others. He would often say, no one's above you and no one's below you. Maybe it was something he inherited from his grandfather, my great-grandfather, Patrick Howard, who was arrested on the gold fields at Ballarat in 1854, pretty close to here. Dad was born and raised in the unremarkable southwest Victorian coastal town of Dennington. I was too, along with my four brothers and two sisters. Dennington is five kilometres west of Warrnambool and ironically named after the village where Governor Charles Hotham was born in England, the man who presided over the government administration during the eventful chapters of the Eureka Stockade. It was a quietly spoken family mythology how great-grandfather Patrick had been a digger at the stockade and been present the morning that the British authorities attacked the miners' defensive stockade. 22 miners were killed that day by the Redcoats, maybe more, by the Redcoats of the British Army and an overzealous and corrupt police force who went on a bloodthirsty rampage after the battle, which had lasted less than half an hour. Another 10 were injured and six Redcoats lost their lives. It's easy to get lost in the mythology and to forget the reality. Imagine a demonstration in Victoria today, in Ballarat today, where 22 protesters were shot and killed. Ten more were injured and six army soldiers, because the army had been called out, were also killed. It's no small thing. In the 1970s, Dad's sister, oldest sister, Auntie Moira, awoke my interest in Eureka. Your great-grandfather was arrested at the Eureka Stockade, she said, with some pride. He was also instrumental in the design of the flag, you know. It was a comment that we all took with a grain of salt and we thought Dad's sister may have been elevating Grandfather Patrick's involvement in the stockade. But nearly 40 years later, Dad's first cousin, Ella Hancock, who we met at the Eureka anniversary but had never met previously, reinforced exactly the same story almost word for word as a second oral history. I wrote the Rebel Song in the mid-1970s as a tribute to my great-grandfather and the miners who took a stand against a corrupt authoritarian government and constabulary. 
I was young and I had a young person's view of things. There certainly weren't the historical resources and books around like there are now, as the Eureka history continues to broaden and deepen. They were brave, those people. They had the courage of their convictions. I wanted to honour them. I appropriated a segment of Henry Lawson's poem, Freedom on the Wallaby, for the chorus lyrics. Lawson had written the poem as a tribute to the Shearer's strike of 1891. It seemed appropriate. We're the bold men of Eureka In the misty light of morn I swear that where my brother fell I saw a baby born Thank you. 